application side. Simply design was whilst not conventional, given the split level approach, it's considered um, the, the design would be appropriate and wouldn't attract it from the character of the area. Surrounding property is varied in age, character, and size, and size is not overly common um, in the street scene, or from public master points around around the site. <coughs> Overall development is considered a sustainable one in this location, it's recommended for approval, subject to a number of conditions as listed in the officer report, notably um, requiring confirmation of the levels. Boundary treatment, landscaping, the materials, and removing permitted development rights for the development. Um, two additional conditions that are requested that aren't listed in the detail that I can find. Um, they, they will cover um, site waste management, um, but also refuse collection within the, 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 uh, the plot. Um, members will be aware of this reference in the report to the waste local plan policies. WN8 and WN9, essentially these two conditions would, would pick up the, the requirements firstly for um, construction demolition waste to be um, used in an in in uh, environmentally um, sound way, uh, so the core would be used on site, but secondly to make sure there are any sort of refuse disposal within site. Um, I have been working with the conditions that can meet the map, but um, there, there are similar conditions on this report. To myself, but I don't care. Councillors? No, they just feel he'll, he'll, he comes last. Oh, right, okay. The, the councillors usually speak last. Okay. So if you'd like to come forward to this chair in front of you, so just leave your things. You'll be. That's it. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> just, just sit down in the chair. Yeah. So that on, on the microphone, you see there's a silver button. Yeah, just come <laughs> okay. At the bottom of that, uh, you see a little silver button. If you press yeah. that, that'll turn your microphone. Yeah. If you just introduce yourself and tell us your name and address, and then you'll get five minutes to speak from them. Is that okay? Um, just press your button. Yeah, so it wasn't my intention to speak. Everything I need to say is going to be said by the councillor. Okay. Uh, first of all, name Paul Thomas from 32 Dudley Gardens. Okay. I was under the impression that the councillor could speak for me for my behalf. That's all right. You don't have to. Yeah, it's all right. So what we will do is we'll take up the petition and have it spoken. I don't know if the council is going to be able to do Okay, what, what, yeah. what that means is that the applicant won't be able to speak then. So if you, you're saying you're not going to speak, is that, is that okay? Okay. Sorry, sorry for dragging. That's all right, it's fine. So it, it'll be my call that to perform. So the council would like to perform, please. Also, 
the position of, um, of the Blanco plot to numbers 28, 30, and 32 Beverly Gardens. One of the reasons the last proposal was refused has not changed significantly, significantly from the last proposal. As I've said, some of the older residents in Mill Road have been protesting about these proposed plans for a new build, for new build houses on this site since the 1970s. New, new plans keep getting presented which do not address the same problems going back to the 1970s. This site is just not big enough to accommodate three split level houses. The closeness of the existing properties to this closeness of the existing properties this committee saw on the recent site visit, where we have residents of Mill Road concerned about the building works that will occur if, if um, permission is given tonight. Mill Road, as the, the site visit showed, is a very narrow road. Parking at present is a major concern. The emergency services, fire engines, and I'd like the, the committee to think closely about this. It is a very narrow road, no road. The emergency services, fire engines, ambulances, police already have major problems gaining entry here. Mm. As do Biffa while stenching the bins. Any new traffic coming in with the latest application would greatly exacerbate this already serious problem. Access and any extra parking would undoubtedly cause major problems to existing residents. Drainage at present in the properties in 15, 17, 19, and 21 Mill Road, they already have major problems with the drainage here. These problems are, they, are being exacerbated, and they, they have been overcome as we speak, as I speak. The sewerage is backing up within the toilets in the back gardens, and some of these residents have got children, and these problems are ongoing. Has this applicant fully understood the problems this site already has with drainage? These problems are ongoing and serious. Mill Cottage at the top of the site, and Lavender Cottage on the side of the site, feel strongly that their quality of life will be seriously damaged if the application succeeds. The close proximity cannot be ignored. Any new building will have serious ramifications on these residents' quality of life seriously affect their privacy if they come in the end zone. As the petition from all the residents affected in Beverly Gardens shows the amount of concern this latest planning application is causing, these residents now feel they are being harassed and bullied by the constant onslaught of planning applications. These residents feel the new plans in no way improve on any of the previous plans which have been refused by this committee time and time again. These new plans are still very close to numbers 28, 30, and 32 Beverly Gardens. The plans show screening trees, the gaps between the new houses and the screening trees and the existing houses is far too narrow. The maintenance of the fences and the trees would be impossible. The residents don't want their privacy invaded and they fear looking from their homes or gardens at roof tiles should not be allowed. All the residents affected in Beverly Gardens believe this, propo this proposal, this proposed new build, to be overbearing, oppressive, and very intrusive. The residents have closely studied these plans, and it is obvious to them that they will lose a vast amount of light and have to endure the eyesore of new houses directly overlooking their properties. And I'd, I'd like to, to pause there and just say, for the, for the committee members who didn't go to the site visit. It's a, it's a very steep slope running down from Mill Road. And at present, there's this small piece of land, and then you've got Beverly Gardens at the bottom. Now, it is a steep gradient. It, it really is a steep gradient. And it is small. Which, and, and I've just said about the overlooking properties, which have had a detrimental and negative effect on the quality of life they currently enjoy. The size and closeness of the proposed dwellings, having particular regard to the rear outriggers, is considered to create a dominant and prominent outlook 
when viewed from 26 to 32 and 33 to 35 Burnley Gardens, and the front habitable windows of Lambton Cottage. This is contrary to policy HS4 and NPPF. The planning applicant has shown no regard to the existing residents. Plot 2 would be so close to numbers 28, 30, and 32. It looks as if the properties are touching. How can the applicant think that having houses so close in proximity with the additional screening will not interfere with the privacy or the overbearing effect on these residents who live in and around the site? And it, it is, there's, there's properties all around the, the site that don't, the, the mill road at the top, there's cottages down the side, and then you've got Beverly Gardens. Um, it is, it is undoubtedly overbearing and will have a negative effect on natural light in the houses of 28, 30, 32, 33, and 35 Beverly Gardens. This proposal would result in, un un in, an, un in an unneighbourly form of development as a result of the height massing and position of the proposed dwellings and their proximity to the rear habitable rooms of gardens of 26 to 32 and 33 to 35 Beverly Gardens and the front habitable window, the front habitat window of Lambton Cottage, which is on the side and it is it's very, very close. There's a narrow path which would separate Lavender Cottage from the proposed new build. It is, it's, it's very, very, very small. Um, this development is considered to result in a si si significant loss of amenity with, the, with regard to day, light, and sunlight. This would significantly harm the living conditions of the occupiers in these dwellings. And therefore, again, it's not in accordance with HS4. In the design and access statement on page 15, Paddock Johnson states the issue of quality of life is a subjective issue. I'll answer that by saying yes, the quality of life is a subjective issue. Mr. Paddock Johnson should come into the dining rooms and the kitchens of gar all the gardens, 30 or 32 Beverly Gardens. The privacy of these properties will disappear if this application is granted. Mr. Johnson also claims, he's got a cheek, you know. Mr. Johnson also claims the site is presently overgrown. Again, yes it is. Mr. Riley owns this land. He should maintain it and he should, he should clear it. And he's clearly failed to carry out any maintenance whatsoever. This again highlights the total lack of empathy or understanding shown to the residents by the applicant. As I've stated previously, a major objection to these plans is the drainage, water, electricity, gas, and other utilities, and how these plans will affect all the surrounding properties. The necessary utilities are already overloaded. And as with the drainage, all are already causing major problems. In addition to these already overstretched utilities, could have serious ramifications for all the surrounding residents if these, if these, um, if this new build goes ahead and like that. The residents feel strongly that the proposed new houses will be up, will have an overbearing effect, and screening will seriously devalue the surrounding properties and will have a detrimental effect on selling should any residents wish to do so. And the, the residents feel this is totally unacceptable. In conclusion. This planning application. <laughs> thank you for that, Sue. I hope you're still awake. You're still awake. In conclusion, this planning application is trying to put a pint into a half pint glass. The site is totally unsuitable and far too small to accommodate these plans. All the problems have been pointed out. The overbearing effect on residents from Beverly Gardens, the access, lack of parking, closeness to existing properties, drainage and utilities will be compromised even further by this application. I agree fully with the residents' very real concerns. All the residents, apart from one who was on holiday at the time, have signed the petition. As I mentioned right from the start, this has been ongoing since the 1970s, and the same issues still exist. I would hope the committee share my feelings that this piece of speculative building at its worst, the 
are only proper matters of the building, certainly not the concerns of the residents. Um, I, I hope you feel that, that when you, you come to the right conclusion, um, not grant this, uh, this application. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Committee for listening. Thank you, I hope so, Chair. I hope so. Can I miss anything else? Can I miss anything else? Right. Can we open this up? A few of us have went to the site visit and then um, okay. um, start with Dave and then come. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Might I just suggest that Michael get an Oscar for that? Thank you. <laughs>